Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 39 of the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Sam. And we have big news about our big news from last week. Tell them all about it, Sam. Well, as we told you last week, I was going to be heading out for a week's uh, yoga and meditation retreat at a vegan ashram in western Maine. Unfortunately, we found out at about 4.30 in the morning on the day I was to depart that my flights had been canceled due to bad weather in New York. So, yeah, so we didn't make it to the ashram after all. Uh, Fortunately, I will be able to reschedule the trip for some time in the future. So yeah, that, that's good. Yeah. So luckily, um, they're open to, to me coming at a future time. So I'm super psyched about that. But it was a little bit of a bummer that uh, I didn't get to head to Maine last week. I should actually be out in the woods somewhere right now. Right now. Right now. Yeah. Meditating and yes. finding your chi or something. Yes. Something <laughs> along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I was disappointed for Sam, but in in a way I was kind of glad she wasn't going. <laughs> yeah, you don't like it when I go away. I, I miss her. Oh. Yeah. That's sweet. I miss you when you're gone. And so do the cats. They do. They totally do. Our one cat, his name's Chirpy. You probably heard us talk about him. He's a little he's a bobcat, a domestic bobcat, and he mopes the whole time Sam is gone. <laughs> Just mopes. I've never seen anything like it. He won't like, he doesn't want to play like he normally wants to play. You have to like force him to come out and have supper. And he's just like, mm, I'm I'm not happy. Oh, my schedule's all messed up. Oh, poor boo boo. Yeah. Yeah. But so you they're know. glad you didn't go. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, hey, bright side, I did get to start working on some things that I'd been putting off like our website. Oh, yeah. So I did get some good work done on the website. Got some updates going, some new blog posts heading your way. Yeah, that's great. Did a little reorganizing and updating. And so we're in a much better shape than we were even just a few days ago. Yeah, it's definitely, it's looking good. www.compassionandcucumbers.com. That's right. Yeah. So that's definitely uh, on, on its way now. And um, also... I got to, for the very first time since you started the cookbook challenge. Oh, this is exciting. I got to make the recipe of the week. Sam made this week's recipe of the week. So exciting. Yeah. So let's dispel the rumor that I can't cook. Oh, there ne- was there a rumor that you I can't I have no cook? idea. But if there was, let's dispel <laughs> if it If there now. was, I must have been the one that started it. Probably. <laughs> but, yeah. But it's not that I can't cook. Absolutely it's not. It's that um, since Christine is retired and I still work full time... Um, when we're in the course of an academic year, Christine just kind of takes over most of the yeah. household responsibilities, including the cooking. Yeah. And so uh, we got on a schedule where on Monday evenings, uh, Christine would make the recipe of the week. Mm-hmm. I would eat the recipe of the week and yeah. then we would talk about the recipe of the week. It's... Yeah. But this time it was completely opposite. Sam made the recipe of the week. I ate the recipe of the week, and now Sam's going to talk about the recipe of the week. That's right. I mean, I'll talk a little bit about it, too. Yeah. So in a complete reversal of fortune, or role reversal, or something like that, uh, here we go. So now, here's this week's recipe of the week. recipe comes from a wonderful cookbook that I found called Tahini and Turmeric. And I couldn't resist this book because, of course, the title is two of my favorite things. Right. I mean, you can't go wrong with either Tahini or Turmeric. And I love so Tahini. This is um, Middle Eastern classic dishes, and they are completely veganized. So the subtitle is uh, 100... There we go. 101 Middle Eastern classics made irresistibly vegan. Now, when we talk about Middle Eastern food, there are many, many, many things that we could be talking about that's all over the place. Like it's such a large region and there are so many variations on the concept of Middle Eastern. So I just want to clarify what exactly we are talking about here. And in this case, um, we are talking about a combination of Spain, Lebanon, Israel, America. And that is because the two authors of the book, Vicki Cohen and Ruth Fox, Our sisters, they were raised in Barcelona by Syrian Lebanese Jewish parents, and they now live in New Jersey. 
I think that's awesome. I do too. I just think yeah. that's absolutely phenomenal. So I think you it's get... awesome that it's a sister's project because that would be like, I could see my sister and I doing something like that Oh, I with could, food, you know. I could totally see you and yeah. Linda doing a cookbook. Yeah, that'd be fun. It'd be really fun, I think. You just have to argue over whether it was vegan or not. Um, it would be vegan. Yeah. <laughs> would there would be. be no arguing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, either I wouldn't be involved or it would be a vegan cookbook. Oh, but my go. sister, I think, would have um, plenty of input on vegan recipes. She's been knocking it out of the park lately. With oh, her she really has. Recipes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so anyway, uh, Vicki Cohen and Ruth Fox, uh, they have a wonderful food blog at mayihavethatrecipe.com, which I think is a great That's title. Cute. Very, very cute. And, um, they've worked with loads and loads of vegan companies, food.com, Go Veggie, Natural and Kosher, Sincerely Brigitte. They've developed recipes for Explore Cuisine, Silk, Cola Vita, Maye, So Delicious, Gold's Olive Oils, and Sabra. So they've been doing oh, some wow. amazing work. Yeah, their recipes have been featured on tons of websites, including BuzzFeed Foods, Whole Foods, Huffington Post, Shape Magazine, Red Book, Serious Eats, PETA, Greatest, and Brit and Company. So they are out there, and they are doing some absolutely amazing work. Yeah, it sounds like it. And this recipe is no exception. So... um Yesterday was kind of a cooler, rainier day than we've had recently. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of had more of a hint of spring than summer. So it felt like a good day to roast things. So the recipe I went with is roasted cauliflower with green tahini. Now, I got really excited about this because this actually involved taking two small heads of cauliflower and roasting them whole. Yeah, we've never done that before. We've never done that before, so it was super exciting. Um, and this is a take on an Israeli dish. Um, the Israeli dish is actually fried. Now, I don't know if in the original dish the cauliflower um, is fried whole or fried in pieces. I like to imagine I, me too. I, that it's fried whole. Because that just excites me for some reason. I want to bring a big vat of boiling oil to to temperature. And toss a cauliflower and, in there. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the fire department. <laughs> yeah, but it just sounds exciting to it me. It really does. It really does. So I'm not sure if the cauliflower is fried whole in the original dish, but um, the authors decided to go with a roasted cauliflower instead of a fried cauliflower. Um, of course, much healthier um, than frying. Definitely. Yes. And then they added a whole lot of beautiful fresh herbs into tahini, um, along with some lemon juice to make a beautiful, bright dressing to go over the cauliflower. They recommended serving it over um, one of a couple of their rice dishes that are also in um, this cookbook. Oh. But we decided not to, or I decided. Right. It wasn't a we thing. It was a me thing. I had no I guess. part in it in this decision. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided not to go with grains, but instead I served the cauliflower over a bed of mixed greens, mm -hmm. some sesame seeds, not sesame seeds, sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds uh -huh. and a bed of lemon dill roasted asparagus right that we got with our farm share that we got with our farm share yeah i think wonderful. you made a good choice it was it was really good it was it was light mm -hmm. yet filling i mean you are he, he you're eating an entire head of cauliflower now mind you these were small ish right no they I were mean, maybe the size of a softball yeah they were small cauliflower. heads of cauliflower they yeah. were not huge and but the star of the show definitely is the sauce oh my gosh that it's beautiful sauce. It's and it's beautiful. so it's bright. It's like neon green. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's very, very pretty. Um, and we topped that with some um, toasted walnuts. The recipe actually called for pine nuts, but we couldn't find any at we our lo local grocery store. Odd. Right. So we went with walnuts instead because we always have walnuts on hand. We always have like, I don't know. I have a giant container. I think it's like maybe 10 pounds of walnuts. I don't know. Probably <laughs> because usually we'll find a good deal yeah. on bulk walnuts yep. and there we go and i just filled this giant i have this giant glass jar that i use uh for our walnuts and yeah we always have them on hand and you know uh, pine nuts are are kind of pricey mm -hmm. so yeah well walnuts aren't cheap either no they're not but pine in nuts, general pine nuts are more expensive there is definitely a, a bit of a 
different flavor between pine nuts and walnuts. But any in any recipe where it has pine nuts, mm-hmm. I've heard many chefs say that you can substitute, substitute walnuts. walnuts. Well, I I loved the walnuts. Yeah. Um, oh, I did too. Yeah, I actually enjoy walnuts far more than I enjoy pine nuts. Yeah. So for me, it was a good substitution and texturally it was great texturally it was fantastic gave just a bit of crunch i also like the crunch that came from the greens because by the time you're done roasting this cauliflower and it roasts in the oven for about an hour it is just soft like you you take a oh, knife like and it just you just sank right yep. through it was like cutting through an absolutely beautiful cake it, it was i mean <laughs> it, it was really was. just unbelievable how perfectly this cauliflower was cooked yeah and it was very, very flavorful and just what also I couldn't get over about this recipe was how simple it was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess some, um, yeah, simple, not, not, and not hugely time consuming or labor intensive. Yeah. I mean, essentially to roast the cauliflower, um, I, I did the roasting slightly differently than they recommended in the recipe, but uh, because I roasted each cauliflower in an individual foil pack. Oh, okay. I love foil yeah. pack roasting. Is that what... She didn't want you to foil pack them? No. Th- she had them um, on foil on a baking sheet, oh. and then you covered the whole baking sheet oh, with foil. Oh, okay. So they would have roasted together. Yeah, no, I think you made a good choice there. Yeah, I, I like foil packs. Yeah. I don't know. It's... Yeah, and for the amount of, like you said, it, it's not super labor intensive this mm-hmm. recipe i think that the the wow factor is really there i think this would be really cool if you were having like a small dinner party mm-hmm. or something get yourself a bunch of small heads of cauliflower mm-hmm. if you're having like a vegan dinner party i think this would like what really wow people oh absolutely and not really take a whole lot of time away from you know socializing right yeah which it's is cool visually beautiful um incredibly tasty the sauce is phenomenal yeah the sauce is awesome. and again no grains necessary if you're not feeling them if you want to keep the dish really light just serve it over greens yeah it's beautiful yeah absolutely beautiful so this is definitely a book i will be exploring further um middle eastern in all of its forms is right up there with with indian food for me yeah uh top of the list in terms of flavor profiles so i'm imagining we will hit this cookbook again oh yeah um that book will shortly be filled with multitudinous post-it, post-it notes. notes yes <laughs> so once again the title of the cookbook is tahini and turmeric and that is by vicky cohen and ruth fox we will of course place an affiliate link in the notes of the podcast mm-hmm. so you can go directly to it if you are interested in purchasing it we'll also give you a link to to Vicky and Ruth's blog, absolutely. Um, may I have that recipe dot com? Yeah. Definitely yeah, we'll worth link, checking out. Yeah, we'll link to all that in the in the show notes and also in our bio on Instagram. You can always find our cookbook of the week and our uh, get the gadget um, kitchen gadget of the week. Ooh, did we pick a gadget? Uh, not for, not for this week, not yet. Okay, I'll ask you what all you used and what. Well, I didn't really use very many gadgets. Yeah, it wasn't a gadget heavy. No, it wasn't. I mean, the gadget I used was the Vitamix. Uh, Well, I could link to the Vitamix. You could. Yeah. You might have to (laughs) because there were no other gadgets involved. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but you can always find those in our uh, Instagram bio, in the links in our bio. There you go. Yeah. I have a little bit of news that I forgot to say at the beginning of the, at the top of the show where we share you know, things that have happened or whatever. I am completely covered in mosquito bites. Okay. I, now, my only uh, answer to this is that maybe there was a mosquito in our bedroom or something. Because there's no way I would have let a mosquito bite. My my arms are covered in mosquito bites. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to get that off my chest. Yes. <laughs> if it's any consolation, I have one mosquito bite. Do you? Yes, on on my right ankle. Oh, I have one on my ankle too, on my left ankle. But I think a mosquito must have got, or multiple mosquitoes must have gotten into the house and and bit me in the night. Well, it's entirely possible. I mean, you've been outside. Well, also you have to remember you were mowing the lawn this morning. Yeah, I did some yard work the other day. Did some yard work the other day. I mean, I suppose like while I was working, they could have been biting me and I wasn't noticing it. Totally. Or you're going in and out of the house, you know, they, they sneak in. Yeah, so let me know if you people have have any like good uh remedies for, you know, other than like off or some terrible deep thing to discourage um mosquitoes from biting because they just made a meal out of me. 
Well, if you remember that one time we went camping, I made a a spray out of essential oils that worked really, really well. Yeah. That was a combination of, I believe, lots of citrus oils. So uh, lemongrass, lemon, lime, orange, and then I think some citronella oh, in there okay. as well. Well, I'll try that next time I'm outside. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can mix you something up if you yeah, want. Yeah, I'll try that next time I'm outside. But if anybody out there has any kind of um, tried and true, like, home recipes or something that you use to deter the mosquitoes from biting you, you know, let me know. Reach out. Because I just, I hate it. And I'm all itchy. It's terrible. Poor thing. <laughs> oh, let's have a pity party. Let's have a pity party for Christine. <laughs> Aww. All right, should we move on to our next segment? Go for it. You, next, are, you are the leader of the next segment, ooh, so take it away. I'm the leader of the next segment? I yes. didn't even know. Um, yeah, so uh, this week we are dropping back into our segment called These Are a Few of Our Favorite Orgs. And uh, this week we'd like to shine the spotlight on uh, two organizations that are near to us and dear to us um the first of which is project 716 which is the vegan in the vegan center in buffalo project vegan 716 um is located at the vegan center at 60 broad street in tonawanda and they have events they have like support groups like business support groups they have a vegan pop-up market that happens um they're doing one June to Juneteenth. I don't have a hard time saying that. I don't know why they're doing a Juneteenth Juneteenth slash Father's Day pop up market from two to six. They're doing a summer pop up market um, on August fourteenth from two to six. It's an indoor and outdoor market. They're doing another one in October. They do a Halloween market, and I know they also do like a Halloween potluck kind of party thing. Yep. Um, and of course their big thing is they do a holiday pop-up market in December and they do a holiday, uh, like craft show, Mm -hmm. which I believe is December 22nd this year. Um, they have like a consignment shop there where you can bring goods and sell them on consignment. Let me just give you a little bit uh, of information about uh, what their, like their mission statement and all that. Uh, Their mission is to educate the public about the benefits of following a vegan lifestyle to help others transition to a vegan lifestyle and to work collaboratively with other business owners to help grow and strengthen the vegan community. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's fantastic. And, Um, you know, I mean, just from what we saw last week at Western New York Veg Fest, there is so, so much potential for vegan community in Buffalo. Oh, yeah. Huge potential. Um, I like that they define veganism um, right here on their website. Uh, Not just a diet. Veganism is a lifestyle that seeks to exclude all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals. This includes animals used for food, clothing, entertainment, and scientific experimentation. So what they do, um, Project Vegan 716 offers support, education, and resources to all who wish to follow a kinder, healthier lifestyle. They offer one-on-one and small group vegan lifestyle coaching, educational seminars, and DIY workshops. They organize the monthly Buffalo Vegan pop-up markets, and they work collaboratively with other vegan businesses and startups to grow their businesses and fulfill needs within the vegan community. They opened the Vegan Center on Halloween in 2020 at 60 Broad Street in Tonawanda, New York, to further their collaborative efforts with vegan business owners and bring the vegan community together in a safe and welcoming space. I love that. It's awesome. Yes, absolutely. Their philosophy on veganism is right in line with ours. Veganism is about doing the least harm. Veganism is not and cannot be about perfection. We live in a non-vegan world. Each vegan needs to strive to do their best to cause the least harm, but realize that there is an imaginary line that they will need to cross at times. Vegans strive each day to live more compassionately and more sustainably. It's important to continue to educate yourself to ensure you are doing the least harm. Right? Beautiful. I just love what they stand for. Um, it, the vegan uh, Project Vegan 716 is run by Marcy uh, Zastro. Uh, AKA the vegan educator. And she's a certified vegan lifestyle coach and educator. And um, intent, I guess she attended an intensive program at Main Street Vegan Academy in New York City. 
under the direction of Victoria Moran. Oh, yeah. That's a great book. Yeah. If you um, haven't read Main Street Vegan, I definitely recommend you pick it up. It's a good and one. And that's by M- Victoria, Victoria Moran. Moran. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, so um, she has, uh, Marcy has followed a vegan lifestyle for over 25 years. Nice. After being a quiet vegan for most of those years, she <laughs> she realized that there are many people that are interested in following a vegan lifestyle but need more support to make the transition. And that's what we're all about. Absolutely. Right? Yep. That's that's what the impetus for us to start this podcast was. Yep. To get the word out there, you know, to help other people um, make the change. There are also many misconceptions about vegans that tend to shed a negative light on veganism. The vegan educator, which is Marcy, um, was established to help dispel the myths about veganism, to celebrate the benefits of following a vegan lifestyle, and to help others transition to a vegan diet and or lifestyle. I, I just I just love everything she's about. She does such great work. She sure does. Yeah. And um, they have like, space you can rent. You can rent space there. They have a commercial kitchen that is available 24-7, 365. They have a meeting space available daily from 8 to 9, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. They have office spaces available to rent, um, 109 square foot office available right now. Uh, 139 square foot office will be available in August of 22. So you can rent that and they have this full commercial kitchen that you can rent, you know, just like on a, a one time basis. If yeah. you if you want to do uh, cooking classes, which they also hold cooking, yep. cooking classes there. They have a huge meeting room. They have a large conference room there. Uh, they have a smaller conference room. If you have like a smaller group that you want, you know, to get together of people like mm-hmm. a meetup or something, you can um, rent space from them to do that. Which I I just love that, you know, this is like totally community building, everything that she's doing here. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Um, They have an events calendar on their page that you should check out that tells you everything that's going on there. Uh, The cooking classes. They recently had uh, the Retro Blocks Rockabilly Garage Sale. Which just sounds awesome. Yeah. We weren't able to go to that, but it just sounds like fun. Yeah. Um, and they have, uh, meetings, like I said, for business owners, small business owners, up and comers, you know, to help them like form, formulate business plans and, mm-hmm. and all that. It's just, I can't say enough about how great this organization is. And I recommend that you support them in any way that you can. Yes. And if you haven't run into them in person yet, you can definitely run into Marcy, at this year's Western New York Veg Fest. Yeah, she'll be she'll definitely be at Veg Fest. Um and they do on their website they have a contact us page if you want to reach out to get more information or if you want to join some of their cooking classes or anything, you can reach them at 716-491-5074 or like I said you can type in your name and email address on their contact page on their website and that's project vegan716.com. Yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about our next uh, vegan org that we wanted to spotlight? Sounds good. Happy to. So the second organization we are highlighting this week is Penelope's Place, The Sanctuary. Now, Penelope's Place is currently located in Akron, New York, but it got its start in Brooklyn. Um, It was moved to the Buffalo area by co-founders Vanessa and Stephen Dawson uh, to be able to expand their sanctuary beyond the obvious confines of Brooklyn. Living in New York, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't even imagine having a a sanctuary in the middle of New York City. I never lived in Brooklyn, but I did live in Queens. Yeah, I mean, mean, at least in Brooklyn, you could probably have a backyard for chickens, which I think is, that's what they mainly started with. Yes, and it's still their primary focus. Um, so the reason for the name Penelope's place, um, Penelope was a, um, chicken rescued by Vanessa and Stephen from a religious ritual in 2014. And she is the star of an award winning documentary called Penelope, a rescue story. And she's really become kind of the face of the movement to end the use of chickens in religious rituals. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's really kind of amazing. Um, Penelope is no longer with us. She died in May of 2017, but um, Penelope's place has really become an awesome home to 23 chickens. 
That's all. So Penelope's Place currently houses 23 chickens, and I've got to do the names just because I think they're amazing. Well, let's go to their Meet the Animals page and tell us all about the animals. Yes, let's do that. So the Akron New York Sanctuary is home to 23 chickens, and their names are Jack, Dulcinea, Pepper, Dorothy, Kiki, Daisy, Winnie, Robin, Jeffrey, Frederick, Lily, Benjamin, Queen, Olive, Jasmine, Ewok, George, Frankie, Grace, Audrey, and Luigi. Luigi! <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and you, yeah, you really have to go out to their website, uh, Penelope, Penelope's Place, the Sanctuary.com, and check out the pictures of these beautiful birds. They are just phenomenal. Yeah, and Ewok especially. Just the most amazing looking bird. And there are some other animals on there too. Um, Leopold the bunny. Oh my gosh. Who is just adorable. I I just want to go snuggle Leopold. And it looks like they have some cats that they've rescued too. There's Farah, who looks like a a long hair, maybe a mancoon mix Mm, or something. Definitely. Yep. And then this little orange guy whose name is Rumple Teaser. So cute. He's like your perfect ginger. And he's got the greenest of green eyes. Oh, and I just realized I missed the names of two chickens. Oh, well, and what were they? I forgot Cassie and Luna. Oh, well, Cassie and Luna. How could I forget Luna? I don't know. That's, yeah, no, I just realized. <laughs> so, um, yes, so currently uh, the sanctuary is home to 23 chickens, two cats, and a rabbit. Yeah, Leopold. <laughs> Leopold the bunny. Yeah, he's he's kind of amazing. He like, is amazing. Oh, my gosh. I just want to snuggle him. So cute. So cute. But these birds are absolutely gorgeous, and it's just so great to know that they're going to live full and happy lives. Yeah. It's also important to know if you are considering supporting Penelope's Place, 100% of their funding comes from donations and events. So they are not 100% self-sustaining. They definitely do need the support um, that you can offer them. And all funds that are received go directly toward providing food and safe predatory predator-proof structures, supplies, and medical care for all of their animals. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Yeah. So everything goes right back to the animals. They are a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, so they are in it for the animals. They are. Um, they do have an events page on their website, and uh, they don't have any current events. So I do know that they annually hold a vegan pancake breakfast, uh, which takes place usually in April. And it did sell out, which is great. It is great. I want pancakes. Do you? Yeah. All right. Well, I'll make you pancakes. Yeah, they make um, vegan pancakes. And vegans... Non-vegans and veg curious are welcome to uh, to enjoy their pancakes. Sounds so like a good I'm, time. We need to look for that uh, next year. Absolutely. And then they have like a toppings bar. Ooh. Fruit toppings, syrups, chocolate chips, marshmallows, nuts, spices, and more. Mm. So you can customize your pancakes. I do like fruit with my pancakes. Yeah. And then in, in their last uh, pancake breakfast, they got a donation from Tofurky. Nice. So they had um, some maple tempeh bacon that was donated by Tofurky to provide uh, tempeh bacon for their pancake. Excellent. Breakfast. I think that's awesome. And go Tofurky. Yep. And they also offer coffee and orange juice. And all is included with the ticket price. The ticket price of that was $10. And we will definitely be looking out for that next year. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So look out for that and check their website for um, other activities. I know they'll be at VegFest. At least they were at last year's VegFest. So I'm hoping we'll see... Um, them with a table uh like a at looking for donations at veg fest this year too absolutely so if you see them slip them a couple of bucks yeah yeah every little bit goes a really long way yeah and i like the saying on their the main page of their website it says we're humans and non-human animals come to heal it's a fantastic thought yes yeah i love that yeah yeah, so really that, beautiful. So those are just a couple of the organizations that we are encouraging people to uh, learn about and support if you can in any way. Yes, and, and let it let it be known, however, that these are not the only vegan organizations out there that we think are awesome and amazing. It's just that we're going to spread them out over oh, multiple yeah. episodes of the podcast. So we're not going to hit everybody all at once. So if you have a vegan organization out there that is doing great work in the community, 
don't worry, we're going to get to you. We will find you. We will. <laughs> we will hunt you down and we will find you and we will tell everyone about you. That's right. Yeah, we have to kind of spread it out um, because we don't want all the episodes to be as long as, say, our top five episodes, which always go way too long. Just and, because they're fun. Yeah, they're so much fun. And our episode from last week, the uh, Taste of Vegan episode, also was, I think, a little over an hour or maybe a little under an hour. It was just hour. under an hour. I think it was yeah. 58 minutes. So I think we're, we're at 40 minutes here. We should hey. probably wrap it up with a little housekeeping. You want to do a little housekeeping? Sure. All right. So if you'd like, you can visit us at our uh, under construction and, and newly revised website. Yay. At www.compassionandcucumbers.com. On that website, you'll find some uh, information about what's going on with us these days. You will find every episode of the podcast and you will find our ever increasing blog. Uh, we put up a blog post yesterday about New York Veg Fest's Taste of Vegan, and you can look forward to more posts in the coming days. Um, we're going to be doing some recommendations for vegan resources. Um, we're going to do a top five vegan YouTubers from my perspective. Yeah, that's fun. Um, yeah, it's a good time. I've been writing that today. Uh, we are going to be going to Sunshine Vegan Eats tomorrow. Um, we're recording on a Wednesday, by the way. So on Thursday, we will be heading to Sunshine Vegan Eats. We are very, very excited. Oh, yeah. So we will very shortly have a blog post about that experience. Mm -hmm. um, and we will be doing a full review of that experience in next week's podcast. Yeah, you'll hear all about it next week. Absolutely. Um, you can also find a link to our Buy Me a Coffee site where we are running our ongoing fundraiser for Mockingbird Farm Animal Sanctuary. And once again, we are still looking for $50 donors. If you would like to donate $50 or more, it comes with kind of a sack o loot sack o loot sack o loot I love that. Yes. And the <laughs> I want a sack o loot Who doesn't? Um, and so the sack o loot includes a limited edition Compassion and Cucumber T-shirt, a sticker and magnet pack, and free copies of the audiobooks for both uh, Confessions of an Animal Rights Terrorist by Karen Levinson and Peace to All Beings, Veggie Soup for the Chicken's Soul by Judy Carmen, both of them narrated, narrated excuse me, by yours truly. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, also, um, if you reach out to our Buy Me a Coffee page, I added, um, I added some things, some fun Thing, extra. Incentives, yeah, some fun extra. They call them extras on Buy Me a Coffee, but they are um, they're incentives. Uh, we have, of course, the fifty dollar incentive that Sam just told you about. We have the twenty dollar incentive, uh, which is a podcast shout out and our undying love, and we have a ten dollar incentive, which is our particularly perfect pickle club, which is just hysterical. Yes, um, and in the particularly perfect pickle club. Uh, we'll share recipes and event info and some behind the scenes stuff with you just, you know, via email mostly. So, yeah. Um, so we'll be making some special content specifically for the particularly perfect partic pickle club. And that's hard to say, but it's it is, fun but it's to great. say. It is. And you know how I'm just a sucker for alliteration. <laughs> I love it. And I didn't even make that up. That was all Christine. <laughs> yeah. And with the $20 donation for the podcast shout out and our undying love, you are automatically grandfathered into the particularly perfect pickle club yes i yeah. personally think that the 20 dollars shout out they should also get a sticker and magnet pack uh, yeah we could probably do that i think we can we can do that yeah, yeah so yeah so definitely check that out uh buy me a coffee.com backslash cucumbers all right anything else oh i had one thing oh what's your one thing oh i just wanted to remind people because i keep forgetting to say it on the show to please subscribe when you're on your podcast app Click that subscribe button. If your podcast app allows for reviews or ratings, uh, definitely give us a review and a rating. Five stars. We love five stars. Love them. Who doesn't? Keep them coming. Um, but yeah, um, the way that the podcast world works, um, the more reviews and ratings that we get, it bumps up our visibility. Absolutely. So uh, it just makes us available to more 
amazing people like you. Yes. So if, if you have a podcast app that allows you to do that, please do that and definitely subscribe. And if you're one of the lovely people out there who are listening to our podcast on YouTube, because Christine does post a YouTube version of the I podcast do. every week. Um, also, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, this doesn't necessarily help with our podcast algorithm, but it definitely helps with our YouTube algorithm. It helps so, with our YouTube algorithm. And I just, I, I love it when people comment and stuff on it because I like to have, we have good conversations on YouTube. So yeah. um, it's a more conversational platform. Obviously, podcast apps do not allow for back and forth. Right. So that's the main reason why I upload to YouTube. So if you want to, if you want to just comment and get back and forth with with us, um, you know, we're on top of that. Yes. Your comment will not go unnoticed. Right. And and those YouTube uh, podcast episodes, you know, those are probably predecessors to eventual vlogs. And Yeah, probably. Yeah, we're going to head in that direction eventually. We're not there yet. <laughs> eventually. We're not there yet, but we're going to head there eventually. So. Yeah, eventually we will he- um, venture into the world of video. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could be videoing what we're doing right now. Sitting in the living room and talking to each other? Um, a lot of podcasters do that. Really? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. A lot of um, successful podcasters just video what we're doing right now and they put it up on YouTube and people watch it. No kidding. Yeah. Didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, it's like watching a talk show, you know? I guess. Yeah. Never thought of that. So that's something we might do uh, down the line and then you could... Uh, watch the cats chewing on cords and uh, causing, Good times. <laughs> causing mayhem. Good times. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, okay. I think that's it. I think I we do. can wrap I think this that's up. It. We can. There's nothing else. No, I don't think so. Although, you know, we can mention, of course, that in the coming weeks, we're actually heading out for a family vacation in Orlando. Uh, we are doing some pre-recording uh, because of that, because we will not be taking our equipment with us no. to Florida. I looked into it. It was just too much of a hassle. Yeah. So we will not be broadcasting from Florida, but uh, we will have plenty to talk about when we get back. So this week's episode and next week's episode um, have been pre-recorded and... When we get back on the 23rd, we will be prepping for the first of two um, Exploring Vegan Orlando episodes. Yeah. So if you want to know all like um, the vegan food that's available in, in the Magic Kingdom, in uh, Universal, Universal, uh, Studios. Universal Studios, at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, we're going to be checking out all the vegan options there and then passing all that information on to you. So I'm looking forward to it. We're going to be tracking down the restaurants that have vegan options at Disney Springs. We're going to be looking a little bit further afield yep. here and there to see what we can track down in the Orlando area Hit a grocery store or two. Hit a few grocery stores. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it'll be a whole lot of fun exploring the vegan scene in a completely different part of the country. Yeah. yeah. And uh, say a little prayer for us. I think it's like 94 there or something yeah. now. So it's going to be our uh, our Western New York uh, bodies are going to be like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's going to be a little warm. Yeah. We may be spending a lot of time in the pool. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. All right. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. And we will see you on the flip. We sure will. Next week. Have a great week. Same time, same channel. All right. Oh, it's not bad anymore. No, bat, not bad. I don't say bad. I say bat. Say bat. Okay, see that? This shows our age, our generational. I know Sam says it's not generational, but our age difference? It's not generational. If any of you are old enough to remember the original Batman series that used to play on TV when you were young, the live action. Uh... Every, at the end of every episode, they said, stay tuned for next week's episode. Same back time, same bat channel. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you, you were thought always saying, saying same bad? bad time, same bad channel. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm glad we cleared My that. entire life, I've thought that's what it was. Whenever somebody <laughs> made that reference. Really? I always thought it was bad. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All righty. We'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. If you'd like to support the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast, you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers and buy us a cup of coffee. Thanks so much for listening and for supporting us in what we're doing. We're really having a good time with it.